Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving, I mean, we're not going to be solving an equation, obviously. We're going to be evaluating an infinite product. So we have 3 over 4 times 8 over 9 times 15 over 16, so on and so forth, all the way up to infinity, where the denominators are perfect squares and the numerators are always one less than the denominator. Make sense? So we have 4, 9, 16, which is 2 squared, 3 squared, 4 squared at the bottom. And on top we have 1 less than that. For example, 3 over 4, 3 is 1 less than 4. 15 over 16, 15 is 1 less than 16. Does that make sense? I hope it does. Now, we're going to evaluate this infinite product. It's not a sum, it's a product. So for these kinds of products, we're usually looking for something easy, right? I mean, who would want to multiply infinitely many numbers? No one, because no one can, right? But, so we need to find a shortcut. Maybe we can write more terms to get a better idea. Let's expand a little bit more to see if a pattern emerges. So 3 squared at the bottom, and then we have 4 squared, and then 5 squared, would be 25 so it's going to be 24 over 25 and then we're going to have the 35 over 36 and we're going to have 48 over 49 notice that the numerators are actually odd even odd even right well actually that's not true did we skip something okay i have we, we did not um so what happens is it's supposed to alternate yeah actually it does odd even odd even odd even yes that's the case okay anyways <laughs> At first, I thought it, was, it wouldn't work. So let's try to cross-cancel this because a lot of times with these products, can we call these telescoping products? I know there's something called telescoping somewhere. A lot of terms cancel out and we end up with something easy. But could we have something called a telescoping product? I'm not sure. Anyways, let's take a look at this. 4 goes into 8 two times. Good. 9 and 15, 9 doesn't go into 15, but 9 and 15 have a common factor. We can divide by 3 maybe, right? 16 and 24 are both divisible by 8. And then these two are divisible by 5, so we can get a 5 and 7. And then here we have the 12 as a common factor, which is a 3 and a 4, so on and so forth. The next one, which is going to give us 63, and 49, they'll also have a common factor. So we always have a common factor. Looks like there's a lot of cross cancellations. Let's go ahead and see what we have, uh, we, what we end up with. So we're gonna have a three here, a two here, a five here, a three here, a seven here, a four here, dot, dot, dot. And at the bottom, by the way, this would probably be considered the first method, even though I didn't call it that. And then at the bottom, we're gonna have a three and a two, and a 5, and a 3, dot, dot, dot. Hmm. That's actually pretty interesting. And if I do one more term, here by 7 will give me, uh, if I divide by 7, I should be getting 9. Cool. So 4, and then 9 will be the next one. And then here, after 3, we're going to have a 7. You know what that means? Looks like a lot of terms are going to cancel out. But the million dollar question is, what are we going to end up with? Let's take a look. We have the 3 and the 2 and the 5 and the 3 and the 7. By the way, there was nothing left here, right? So let's make sure it's good. So all these terms are going to cancel out. And then all these terms are going to cancel out. Wait a minute. Are we going to get 1 from here because everything cancels out? I don't know. It's kind of weird, right? I mean, something should be left over, but nothing seems to be left. So maybe the answer is 1. Let's just put a question mark because we're not sure yet, right? And I will still show you the second method. By the way, I'm also going to show you the result from Wolf from Alpha. I hope I did not forget to include it because I sometimes do. And you can kind of think about it like, do you think Wolf from Alpha can find this product in this form? I did not use any variables. I just, you know, prompted the exact same thing with the dot, dot, dot and a question mark and all that stuff. So do you think Wolfram Alpha can take it from here? We're going to find out at the end, okay? But before that, let's go ahead and talk about how we can express this with the pi notation. I was going to say sigma, but sigma is for addition. What is pi? 
So pi is basically a multiplication symbol. And if you kind of write something like n equals 1 through 5, n, this just means 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5, which is the same thing as 5 factorial. So that's a shortcut. Okay? Make sense? So how do we express this product using pi, though? Like 3 over 4, and then we have 8 over 9, and then 15 over 16, so on and so forth, right? We can actually express this using the following, pi for multiplication, and then I want to start with n equals 1, and it's going to go all the way to infinity. Obviously, infinity is not a number, so there is no end. And then we're going to be able to express this, right? What is the denominator? Well, denominator is 4, which is 2 squared, but my first index is 1, so maybe I can start with 2. There's That's one way to handle it, so that I can have n squared at the bottom and the, the top will be n squared minus 1. Nice. You know why this is nice? Let me tell you. Because this kind of gives you an idea about how we can solve this problem. Let me show you how. Because we have a product, we can actually split it into products. For example, when you have something like 15 times 24, I'm just making it up, you can kind of write this as 3 times 5 and you can write this as 4 times 6. And then if you want, you can write this as 3 times 4 and 5 times 6 and kind of change the numbers around. This is still products like two products here and two products here, but the products are different. But it gives us the same answer. Does that make sense? So we're going to go ahead and rearrange this. What is that? n equals 2 to infinity. And that's why I want to, I could start at 1, but then I would have to use n plus 1 squared, which wouldn't be that nice. You see? That's not very good. I want to use n at the bottom. So denominator will be n squared and numerator will be one less. But guess what? The numerator is a difference of two squares. How beautiful is that? So we can go ahead and factor it into n minus 1 times n plus 1. And we can actually factor n squared too. We can write it as n times n. Here's where the magic begins. We can kind of separate this. So whenever you have a product of products, you can split them. In other words, if you have something like, let's say, n equals something, I don't know, k to whatever, infinity, let's just say infinity, and we have something like, let's say, f of n and g of n, just two functions of n, we can kind of write it as pi f of n times pi g of n. Make sense? Because they're all products. Cool, cool. Now let's go ahead and split this up into two pieces. So that's going to be n equals 2 to infinity n minus 1 over n times pi n equals 2 to infinity n plus 1 over n. And what is so significant about this is that each product can actually be simplified very easily. Take a look at the first one. 2 over 1, 3 over 2, 4 over 3, dot, dot, dot. And then the other product, a bigger dot, n equals 2 gives us 3 over 2, 4 over 3, 5 over 4, dot, dot, dot. Now, you can look at it two ways. One way is kind of cross-cancel, 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 and then end up with a 2 at the bottom, which should give you 1 half because everything else canceled out. Or you can kind of take it this way. That's just There is an alternative approach, which is really cool. Let me show you. You can kind of bring these products together one more time. But look at this. 3 over 2 and... Wait a minute. There's something wrong with this, right? 2 over 2. Okay. I probably messed up somewhere. Let me check. Oh, yeah. This first one should be a little different, I think. If n is equal to 2, that should be 1 half. Okay, here we go. 1 half, and then 2 over 3, and then 3 over 4. Okay. And then when I cancel, looks like still 1 half is left. But it's just canceled differently. Here, we have 1 half, 2 thirds, 3 fourths, dot, 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 and then the big dot. Now take a look. These two are reciprocals cancel. These two are reciprocals cancel. This is going to cancel. 
we're gonna end up with one half. No matter what you do, we're gonna end up with the same number, right? But let's go ahead and check if Wolfram Alpha can do this. What do you think? Let's check our work. Ta da da da. Yes, Wolfram Alpha. I did not give it in the pi form, but it was able to evaluate. So good job, Wolfram Alpha. Let's give you some credit this time. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care and bye-bye.